So the first one I'm going to talk about is the why the parent voice matters. Now, um, if we look at, like, I know there's a lot of, like, debate around the curriculum, but if you look at the core of curriculum around the world, it, much of it is very similar. But it is the context of the students, families, and communities that is very, very different. So it's no wonder why the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation, um, has shown that more parental involvement just makes a huge difference for student success. Uh, Italian parents that asked how the kid was doing in school once a week or more did 38% better in math. That's not bad. That's not bad as a gain. Hong Kong parents that ate a meal with their child almost every day did 18% better on math. Now, I've had the, the fortune of meeting Dr. Debbie Pusher. She's a leading researcher on the parent voice, and she reminded me that while students do spend 17% of their year at school, the other 83% is spent outside of school. So parents need to be co-constructing the school plans. They should be co-constructing the school plans and not only rubber stamping it. Now, lockdowns, they changed everything in schools. You know, when schools closed, every parent went from being a supporter of their kid's education to a partner. We may not be as familiar with pedagogy, but we certainly know our child's interests, and that's half the battle. So on one hand, we already know that there's huge benefits to having the parent voice. The, the research certainly backs that up. Yet at the same time, something strange was happening in Alberta. Instead of more parent voice in school councils, we saw less. In fact, we saw 118 schools in Calgary that posted school council agendas online last year that had not posted a school council agenda newsletter or even date or minutes for September or October 2020. The parent voice was becoming silent. While it was reported that 10% of learners were moving to online schools in the CBE, we were surprised to find that over 34% of schools in CBE and 30% of schools in CSSD no longer had an active school council in early 2020 to connect parents and collect their, their voices. So you might think, this isn't hard. We can do this. You know, parents are used to attending meetings online. But many of the active parents in schools had made a decision to teach their kids from home last year. And while the CBE Learn school didn't at that point have a school council last year, the St. Isidore online school did. Uh, but it only had one vote at meetings like the Alberta School Councils Association, or ASCA, even though it represented 10 times the number of students, parents, and families of a typical K-9 school. And the reason why parent voice is so important to me is because I've seen firsthand what happens when the parent voice is taken away. I was required to withdraw a motion that started from conversations with over 300 parents in my capacity as the elected school council chair at Blessed Marie Rose. Uh, parents expressed worry about screen time, mental health, and support for children with exceptional educational needs. So I was ordered to withdraw this motion because my child attended the St. Isidore Online School. And I was told that I can no longer stand as a representative for the BMR school. And some of you who know me, already know the rest of the story. Uh, I was elected the chair, I think out of like seven different candidates, I was elected the chair of the St. Isidore School Council. And today, I stand before you 
running for the election of the trustee position for Calgary's Wards 1, 2, and the beautiful town of Cochrane. And so this voice and choice really matters because nobody knows what works best in an online or hybrid scenario. And let's be honest, like this is, this is we're all figuring this out as we go, right? We described, uh, I remember um, Principal Lin described it as, we are building this plane as we fly it, or we're building the boat as we, as we sail. Uh, the, the reality is we have no idea what pr practices work best. Where do we get this information? From parents, <laughs> right? This is why the work of Debbie Pusher is so important. She was saying like, you know, a lot of, a lot of times like parents are seen as a problem. They're not the problem. They're the solution. They're the ones who know best what works today in this scenario. And this is why I look very critically Look, look, look very critically at every single trustee candidate. Do they have kids that are attending like school right now? What age are they? Right? What grades are they in? How have they had to adapt their processes? How have they had to adapt to online learning? How have they had to adapt to the, the new health restrictions? This type of insight is crucial at the decision-making table. It's not good enough to have somebody who, oh, their child went to school and they're all finished now. That, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna help you. In the same way, as somebody who's just starting, right? Like who, who has maybe somebody in kindergarten and has never really experienced the lockdowns, they're not gonna know. They are not gonna know what works best for kids in this time. And so it is very important, your choice of trustee. Uh, and I want you to take it seriously. I want you to look at the different options that are out there. And I want you to look at the candidate that has the most experience with doing lockdowns, you know, doing the online side. It, everything is so different now.